Hello and welcome everyone to Women Speakers Association, WSA TV. I am Laura Rubenstein, your host and producer today. I'm also a digital media marketing strategist, as well as the author of Social Media Myths Busted, The Small Business Guide to Online Revenue. We have a fabulous show for you today. It's all about how to manifest what you want. I want to say hi to our experts and um, get them introduced so we can get right into the meat of our show. So let's go ahead and say hi to Jamila. Hi, Jamila. Hi, you guys. I'm Dr. Jamila Battle, and I'm the author of From Abuse to Abundance, also a speaker and consultant, board certified physician in family sleep addiction, and you can learn more at www.drjbattle.com. All right. Great to have you, Dr. Jamila. Hi, Marilla. Hello, I'm Morella DeVoe. I am a counselor and an NLP coach, or as one of my favorite clients once said, I am a bringer of a new reality. My website is thrivewithmorella.com, and I am in beautiful Burlington, Vermont. Ooh, I bet the uh, leaves are beautiful at this time of year. Gorgeous. Thanks for being here, and we've got Anne. Hi, Anne. Hi, I'm Dr. Anne Deatley, and... I was a research scientist and I turned into an energy medicine practitioner. And my website is www.drandeatly.com. My book is Adventures in Manifesting, Passion and Purpose. And I am from Northern New Jersey, active and thriving New, New Jersey. <laughs> gotta love it. I'm from Jersey too. So we've got a great, great show here today. And so mm -hmm. ladies, we have the, a really powerful topic today. It's called manifesting, how to manifest what you want in your life. So tell me, I'd like to go around and hear from you. What is your advice on how to help people manifest what they want in their life? Let's start with you, Dr. Jamila. Um. I think that people can move from victim to survivor to creator in order to manifest. And I will share more about what that means later in the show. And so do you have a piece of advice for people how they could do that? Um, it ties into my personal journey um, of just how to first basically reboot by speaking your truth and getting the safety um, and then we're repairing through unresolved trauma and how that looks is challenging your critical voice and you're able to hear your nurture voice more when you do that. Um, release and engage with your emotions and self-care. And when you do that piece, then you create rebirth, which is a state of abundance. And that's what we want to get to. And, and what I've gotten from you, Dr. Jamila, is that it's possible even if you've been in a state of you know, really tragic state. There is yes. reboot, rebirth, and what was the other one? Release? Re reboot, repair, repair, and then rebirth. Ah, that's really key in that middle one, <laughs> repair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. All right. Thank you, Dr. Jamila Morella. Tell us what you would recommend for people if they want to start manifesting. It kind of ties into what Dr. Jamila was saying, so I, I, I'm going to love hearing how our <laughs> our work connects. What I like to help people connect with is their emotions. Um, our emotions are a phenomenal, probably the most powerful indicator of what we are attracting into our lives because contrary to what most people would tend to think, we don't manifest, we don't create our worlds from what we're thinking necessarily, but more from who we're being. And who we're being is coming primarily from the mountain of programs in our subconscious mind, past experiences. And so our emotions are a great way of tuning into where exactly are we putting ourselves subconsciously, you know, in thought or memory or, you know, reliving old patterns. So our emotions are a great window into being able to tune into where we are and then be able to adjust. Yes, our emotions are so very powerful. So Anne, I'd like to, I know you work with emotions as well. So um, yeah. what advice do you have for people who want to manifest? Well, I totally agree with Morella that our emotions um, really have, it's, it's a window to who we are. And we can create anything in our lives because we are these energy fields and we are all connected. All of our energy fields are connected. We're also connected to every single possibility in every moment that we want. 
So when we raise our frequencies, then that is what we bring into our lives, everything at that frequency. So it's a choice. It really is a choice, and you, you can do it. I love it. Yes, you can do it. And that's what I'm getting from each of you is the, the power to take your, your power back and do what Dr. Jamila started, you know, start that reboot, tie into the emotions, Morella, and then really uh, figure out the energy vibration you want to be at to attract the life you want. I mean, you guys, power team, <laughs> love it. So let's hear from each of you about, um, you know, who you, who you work with, what you do in your work. Jamila, talk to us. <laughs> yeah, so oftentimes um, we don't realize that unresolved trauma destroys our relationships and next generation's relationships. So I help um, patients and clients and others who are broken down or even living successfully like I was um, heal from that unresolved trauma and pain. Or if you're struggling with addiction, sleep, or you know relationships to move them to reboot, repair, rebirth through um, a sleep addiction practice and an online self-help healing course. Oops. Laura, you're on mute. How did you come to this work? <laughs> Is that... Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Was that for Jamila? Yes, and Jamila, how did oh, you come yeah. to this work? Oh, okay. So basically... Um, I come from a battleground of childhood abuse for 14 years. Both my parents struggled with mental illness and addiction. And my father was a well-known um, jazz musician. And so we looked perfect on the outside, but on the inside, we lived in a prison. We shared our house with rats and bats. Uh, not uncommon for me to be bound to duct tape and beat with wire. But after my abusive father partially fired like a, literally a, a loaded gun to my head and um, a partial that or an attempt in rape that helped me to become courageous to make a promise to get to safety and to create basically abundance for myself. And so by doing that, I've realized later as a kid, I was really good at hiding it and coping with it on my own. But then as an adult, I became a physician and realized the importance of um, reaching out and asking for help um, when I had a breakdown because my values were not in line with my goals and that unresolved trauma sapped my joy and creativity, I had to reboot. And so that was a second reboot in my life where I had to seek safety, kind of ask for help, um, and then that work out the repair of like all those emotions that you're dealing with to kind of resolve that, but also how to listen to that inner nurture voice that's trying to align you to on your purpose and challenge that critical voice that's taking you from your purpose. And when I was able to jump off the treadmill of medicine and create a speaking consultant career where I help increase awareness of unresolved trauma, with helping professionals and educators, but also helping those who suffer in my sleep and addiction practice and reboot, repair, rebirth, that has helped create rebirth and abundance for me because it's a purposeful mission and I'm aligned energetically with um, kind of what I've created, which are the values and the goals that resonate with, you know, my purpose. Wow. Thank you. That's an inspiring story um, to hear. So, um, and great uh, wisdom on how to do that. So, Morella, I'm curious about who you work with and what you do with them. Who I work with is not too dissimilar from Jamila. Um, I, I like to say that I work with people whose past pain is still showing up in their lives. And so that past pain can show up in a variety of ways because it can show up in your relationships, as Jamila said, it can show up in your physical health, it can show up in just your inability to move forward, you keep wanting to manifest something different, or like I say, you keep dating the same person in a different body, <laughs> you know, over and over. Um, and then, you know, 99% of the cases, what I find is it's stories of the past, it's wounds from the past, it's past psychological pain, uh, limiting beliefs um, that show up in the body 
that show up in our eating patterns, in our relationship patterns, in our, the way we go about life. Um, one example, um, in, in terms of physical health, one of my, my favorite examples, because it was so, so dramatic, was a past uh, Crohn's disease client who, you know, he needed help with his food. I used to do a lot of food coaching years ago. So I started helping him with his food and help, you know, helping him figure out what to eat. And then because of my counseling background and my neurolinguistic programming and hypnosis coaching, all of that, I had to ask him about his emotions and what emotions maybe he didn't have a, a, a good, um, uh, he, he couldn't cope with so well. And so he said, well, you know, it's massive because a year before I was diagnosed with Crohn's, I had three deaths in my family. And so he proceeded to tell me how he had to keep it together. And when we started going into the enormous grief that he had never let himself mm -hmm. feel, and then two of the three deaths were uh, negligent accidents from other people. So he had enormous anger, enormous anger and enormous grief that he just mm -hmm. tried to bottle up and pretty much swallow. So then when we went into it and I said, it sounds like your anger and your, and your grief exploded in your intestines, mm -hmm. you know, that it just, um, it was so dramatically evident for him. So we went, we went through the process of then healing that wound from those wounds from the past. And within a couple of months, he was talking to his doctor about getting off of his Crohn's medication. So, you know, the, 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 the possibilities for when we truly look to resolve and heal, as I'm sure Jamila has seen, and, and I know that Anne's also going to talk about, when we can heal the, uh, the past wounds, the beliefs that are attached to that, what we believe is true about ourselves and about the world, um, the, uh, you know, the, the sense of being that we have about ourselves, uh, everything can change in our lives. Totally. So there's a huge mind-body connection here that is uh, powerful mm -hmm. to address. And, and tell us how you came, um, well, tell us about you know, who you work with and what you do with them. Well, I work with professional women, but con conscious women leaders is really who I want to work with. I want to work with people that really want a higher, to be living and achieving in a higher potential. And after I learned about these energy fields that are around us, actually where 90%, 90% of who we are are these energy fields, only 10% are the, the physical form. So when you understand that and you understand the wisdom is really within you, um, then you know that you need to come into this. You came into this world to do something specific. Your soul needs to, you know, your soul has a purpose. There's a primary soul energy. And, you know, if we're aligned with that, life is easier. So I work with people that are seeking a higher potential in their lives. And they know they want to make a significant difference, a significant contrib contribution. Those are the people that, that if they're not getting that or not getting to that next level, they're blocked somewhere in their fields. It could be emotional block. It could be a limiting belief, as Morella said, or it could be layers and layers of stress. We, you know, our lives are so tamped down because we're constricted with this stress. It's a survival mechanism, but we don't really need it most of the time. Yeah, and so when you align with your purpose, what I'm hearing is you manifest. You're able to manifest much easier. Only way to manifest. And when you're really aligned with who you are and that energy, you have to be at this energy to manifest something better. You have to get rid of these blocks. Yeah. That so will maybe the frequency to increase. Do you have a, a story about how you helped a client? I, you know, this is one of my favorite stories. Um, this is actually one of my first clients. But it's so poignant because um, she, she made such a transformation. She came because she was sad. And she basically did everything to avoid the sadness. So that was her default. So she worked 16 to 18 hours a day, six or seven days a week. And basically, she wasn't visible at work. And so we started working. And within eight sessions, I think, Everything changed around. Like her boss started recognizing that she was doing the work of two employees. 
she got um, recognized as the expert in some aspect of her job. And oh, the other thing, the major thing was she was disconnected from her family, like her parents, her sister, and her three daughters. Like she had been divorced. Maybe she had caused the divorce or whatever, but she was disconnected. And within eight sessions, she was reconnecting with her family members too. And there was another thing. She would... She was trying to be elected. She was involved in Toastmasters and she was trying to be elected. And she got at the last minute, somebody came in at the last minute and got, the, got elected. By the eighth session, she was, she was elected as the first woman president of a ham radio program, um, group. Wow. 160 members. And she was the first woman president ever. So like, Everything sort of changed around. For her. Talk about manifesting, get yeah. aligned with your purpose. It's all good. Yeah. So I have one more question for you all because we're at the time, almost at the end of our show here, and I want to put back on the screen everybody's uh, details here. Please be in touch with these amazing women who have uh, just you know the ability to help you manifest what you want in your life, basically. So if anyone resonated there. Uh, Websites are right there for you. But what I want to know is we're all a part of the Women's Speakers Association. And if you can give me one little thing you love about or have joined Women's Speakers Association for, let's just go around and, and give the props up to that. J Jamila, what, what do you love about Women's Speakers Association? Um, basically, it's an accumulation of part of rebirth because once, like Morella said, we go through everything that Morella said is literally repair and going through um, kind of, you know, feeling those emotions and, and working through that. Rebirth is about giving back and sharing your stories because you now own it. And your thinking's not small anymore from the unresolved pain. It's expanded. And so now you're manifesting and you're in line with your purpose. And I felt like um, Women's Speaker Association would be a good platform for me to share and give back, which is a part of rebirth and abundance and manifesting, sharing messages and purposes and resources together with a community of women who are all uh, wanting to be aligned with their yes. purpose and manifest. Yes, rebirth at the Women's Business Association. <laughs> How about you, Morella? What do you love? You know what I love is that uh, you, you, the whole world is shifting to a, um, a rebalancing of the ma masculine and the feminine. And what I love about Women's Speakers Association is that because it is all about the feminine, you know, we're kind of celebrating, showcasing, leveraging all of the beauty and the, the massive um, strengths of the feminine, what we see is that the feminine has a different way of creating. The, the feminine has a different way of, of manifesting, and it is different than what we used to know in the more masculine-dominated world where it was all about competition, kind of dog-eat-dog, dog, you know, just me for myself. And what I as soon as I started you know, joining and looking at WSA, what I realized is there is so much support and collaboration. There's so much of connecting, hey, who has this, who knows that? The, the sisterhood effect to me is one of the most beautiful things. And so it really showcases and, and creates this, this like uh, incubator for all of these extraordinary gifts that are coming through the feminine in a really feminine way. So I, I just love that about WSA. That was really well said. Thank you so much. And, I, you know, it, it needed to be said. So thank you. And Anne, how about you? What have you um, gained from or what do you love about Women's Speakers Association? I love the concept of uh, WSA in raising people's potential. So what we're doing when we're coming together like this, even something like this, we are sharing, you know, what we're passionate about and what we're working toward and how we're trying to make this world a better place. And I, I'm really for women stepping into their personal power, contributing at a higher level, because I think women, it, it's the time. I agree with Morella. This is the time. Women need to really do what they're meant to do here and they can change the world. 
And we are changing the world one woman at a time, one empowered, rebirthed woman at a time. So <laughs> thank you again. Yeah. And if you want to join Women Speakers Association, just go to join wsa.com we have a free level of membership right there for you join wsa.com we will be back with you for another episode shortly of women speakers association wsa tv bye for now bye bye bye, bye. <laughs>